When Uncharted 4 A Thief's End rolled its credits, many people asked whether or not the Uncharted series could go on without Nathan Drake, and if it did, would it be any good? Naughty Dog had a pretty quick answer to that question when they announced Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which would take place after the events of Uncharted 4 and star Chloe Frazier, a secondary character in Uncharted 2, alongside Nadine Ross, one of the villains from A Thief's End that turns out to be not so bad. It was a tall order by all accounts, and as Naughty Dog is known to do, they delivered. Uncharted The Lost Legacy takes players to a brand new location, the southern tip of India, where half of Chloe's heritage comes from and where her father spent his life studying and searching for the Tusk of Ganesh, an artifact of legend that the ancient Hoysala civilization sacrificed their lives for. It's a common archetype for a story, but a good one, and the Indian mythology you learn along the way is really interesting. The story is also reminiscent of Tomb Raider. A father dies before he's finished solving a mystery, and his daughter completes his journey using the knowledge he gave her during her childhood. And the story isn't the only part of the game imbued with Tomb Raider vibes. The story is much more an open world than we're used to from Uncharted games, which 2016's Rise of the Tomb Raider has become known for. This direction change from the more linear doesn't really step on any storytelling toes either. Actually, one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in a video game happened because of the open world nature of The Lost Legacy. I was driving around an open area and Chloe and Nadine started having a conversation. Chloe was telling a story when I decided to hop out and look for a treasure. This halted the storytelling and Chloe said, Oh, hold on. And I was sad that I wouldn't get to hear the end of the tale. But when I hopped back into the driver's seat, Chloe said, Right. Where were we? Oh, right and continued on. I was blown away by the careful attention to detail that Naughty Dog put into this small part of the game, but at this point I probably shouldn't be surprised. When the Lost Legacy does act more like an Uncharted game though, it's also pretty impressive. The vast Indian vistas and intricate artwork of the ancient artisans is really something, even when you're up close and climbing it. All of the classic Uncharted mechanics are there, as well as the new ones introduced in A Thief's End, like rope swinging and rock sliding. Chloe also has the unique ability to lockpick, which is new to Uncharted, and while it's a simple mechanic, there were times where it added a level of stress as the bad guys were about to round the corner. Photo mode makes a return in The Lost Legacy, but they also added a new pseudo photo mode where Chloe will take out her phone and snap a pic of a scenic cliffside or a huge statue, and you can look back at the shots by pressing the touchpad. It's a neat little mechanic that draws your eye to something that you might have skipped past otherwise or might have not spent as much time checking out. Another great addition was the Queen's Ruby. The Queen's Ruby was an item you were rewarded with if you found the 11 Hoysala tokens, which are dispersed around the map in secret tombs. Once you've got them all, the Queen's Ruby bracelet will light up and make a sound when you're near one of the many collectible treasures throughout the game. This, for someone like me who is terrible at finding the darn things, is great, because you even get a directional ringing with the 3D audio to point you in the right direction. While it might seem like cheating, I can say that I still only found a little over half the treasures, even with the ruby. But for those who usually only find like three of them, it's a pretty nice feature. Chloe herself is a great protagonist, and gains a lot of depth she didn't necessarily have before. She was always likable, but Amongst Thieves never really put Chloe into the spotlight in the way that The Lost Legacy is obviously able to do. We learn a lot about her personality, her past, and what drives her, and it really fleshes the character out. Nadine is also given a secondary spotlight, similar to the one she was given on the villain side of Uncharted 4. But this time she's fighting for good, having been stripped of her title at Shoreline after her failure to take down the Drake brothers, and is now obviously looking for work. We're able to sympathize with Nadine this time around, and she's able to reconcile with the cameoed character or characters that may or may not show up in The Lost Legacy. <clears throat> What really distinguishes The Lost Legacy from previous entries into the franchise is the dynamic between these two characters. Uncharted has always teamed Nathan up with someone to make remarks at, but the back and forth between Chloe and Nadine is something different. They have similar views on a lot of things, but where they diverge, they diverge drastically. 
This creates a conflicting sense of understanding and total confusion as to why the other character is acting the way they are, and they learn a lot from each other throughout their job together. They end up getting personal in their conversations because of the understanding half, which allows for constantly interesting conversations between the two of them. So with great characters and a great dynamic between them, as well as all of the mechanics that we know and love, I found it hard to miss Drake, even with his quippy humor, since Chloe shares that same quick wit. A soft. Huh. Well spotted. The villain in The Lost Legacy is good and interesting, but isn't necessarily a standout in Uncharted history. Asav is a man from India who is a freedom fighter and arms dealer that thinks his ideas about going back to the ways of the Hoysala are noble, but who has been corrupted by the greed and lust for power that tends to come with leading a group of armed rebels. He thinks of Chloe as someone who has abandoned her culture and is disgusted by her. So while his drive to get the Tusk aren't as dire as someone like Lazarevich's from Uncharted 2 with his obsession over Shambhala and the Chintamani Stone, Astav still felt like he was the good guy in the situation. He was dynamic too, being able to go from calm, collected, and intelligent to ruthless. The reason he might not be as interesting as other Uncharted villains, however, could be that we spend much less time getting to know him. At nine chapters, The Lost Legacy is the shortest Uncharted game to date, and only a few of them feature Asav himself. So while he isn't the most fleshed out villain we've seen, he's different from the others and gives a fresh look at the token Uncharted villain. Each element that makes an Uncharted game an Uncharted game is there in The Lost Legacy. From the writing and acting, to the story and action, to the gameplay and music, it's nothing short of what you'd expect. It's also tight at nine chapters and only takes about 10 to 12 hours to finish up. Uncharted The Lost Legacy really does prove that the series can live on without Nathan Drake, and seemingly will. So don't sleep on this one, go check it out.